Call the September 10th, 2018 City Council Committee of the whole meeting in order. The clerk will call the roll. Borowitz. Alderman Brooks will be absent. Crawford. Here. Frank. Here. Freeman. Here. Porter. Here. Radcliffe. Sanderson. Snow. Here. Stevens. Here. Six present. Thank you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Under public comment this evening, we have none. Under public forum, we have nothing. Under reports, officers, board, and special committees, we have no one to comment this evening. Under number one, building planning and zoning unfinished business, there is none. Under building planning and zoning new business, we have two items. The first is the extension of a special use for 600 Logan Avenue. So who wants to start? I think it'd be appropriate if Mr. Chaudhry was to come forward and explain his request to the council. So I'm the one going to start. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. I, I'm here today to get a, a three months or 90 days extensions for the projects. I hit, everybody knows that last time we, I, my, all the contract took up the money and went away and I got extension for nine months. No, I'm almost uh, complete the building. I got the walking cooler in there. I got the lighting there. I got a, a finish the floor, finish the drywalls. Bathroom plumbing is done. Little big, like 5% electrics left. And then a little big stucco in the front of the building. Then a pump and the canopy has orders as I got the permits for the canopy and the pump. Pumps I already have in the warehouse. The canopies might take uh, six to eight weeks to get here. And then that's pretty much it so far. We met with uh, Gina about two weeks ago, correct? Correct. And at that time, I advised you the obvious displeasure of the city council and the city in general with your inability to get your work done, even with the nine month extension that you were correct. previously granted. At that point, you told Jim myself that you get everything done in eight weeks. Uh, when I went back with the permit, I sent the permit to fire marshal. If uh, maybe this little help. When I went to, uh, because we need to get a permit from fire marshal. Fire marshal has to prove it, uh, where the pump's going to be, where the canopy's going to be, and where are the old line is going to be go, because we need to put a new lining. Well, you should have had this done, so that could have gotten done in time to satisfy the extension. They cannot get it done, sir, because they have to see the proof permit by the city with the stamps. Okay. The day I got it with the stamps, I have it as we have it submitted. Which permit do you need from the city? For the canopy. Because they need to know where the island's going to go, where the piping's going to go, because the old piping from the tanks to the pump we have to take that on because we cannot use it. They're already broken. Well, it's my understanding that when we granted you this extension, it was the, with the understanding that this project would be finished in, in all of its ramifications and in fulfilling all of the city's needed processing. Correct. By this time. Correct. So the fact that you didn't get it done in time to get this done in time is really, to me, irrelevant. Uh, and, uh, and, ni and 90 more days puts us into winter, and you're not, you know, if we have bad weather, you're not going to get it done in the winter. And in my understanding in conversation with um, folks was that you proposed uh, an island arrangement that is not suitable for that location, which is one of the reasons that things got delayed. Yeah, because uh, because of the pumps, the, the old pumps. And first of all, when we took the permit, it wasn't in my knowledge I have to keep those. If it was my knowledge, I wouldn't even tear them down. I just replace them there. But they are, uh, mobile won't brand me that. So mobile has to have three islands. So we, I got it done, I really appreciate it by you all and I got it done. So no, um, I have orders the canopy with the guys, and we have uh, pumps already there, and we have a uh, concrete to pour outside and the sign. 
We, how long have we been fooling with this now? Uh, almost two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I personally have no confidence that you're going to get this done if we give you another extension. And quite honestly, I think it's a little bit disrespectful to the city that you keep coming back for more extensions and there's this reason and that reason. I'll be real honest with you. I've had more negative comments from the community about this project than anything else since I've been the mayor. I, I understand that. I, I can imagine and that. And I'm, I'm not sure that that's okay. Um, there are some ramifications that the attorney will share with us about what next steps could be and, and what we could possibly actions that the city must take. Okay. Well, and, and frankly, before I go there, you and I spoke last week, and I mentioned that I was surprised by request for 90 additional days. Correct. And that phone conversation, you indicate, well, that's just in case I need it, I can actually reduce that time frame. I, I will reduce, reduce it. I will. So I'm can you reduce a, it? To I'm you? not talking about 90 whole days. But so how many I, days do you need? I will try to reduce it, maybe 60 days. From when? From today. From when the permit expire, end of the September, after 60 more days. No. Because let's, let's, let's set a date. When can it be done by? Six to eight weeks at the canopy is here. So I need at least three weeks to finish. Okay. So what date will you be done by? Uh, Today is September 10th. Can I be done by November 30th? So it's essentially a two-month extension. Days, 60 days. From the termination at this point. If, if you know, I, I like to get a couple of weeks extra if it's possible because I understand the, where Mayor's uh, talking, uh, where he's bringing that up because it's my fault. I have a built uh, 2006 in the Appleton store. I done it for 45 days, but everything went smooth. It took me 45 days to finish from the bottom to start. So this one, everything's in, in order now. So that's why I was requesting 30 more extra days if something. You requested 90 days extra. Nine, uh, uh, 60 plus 10, uh, 60 plus one month. So that's 90 days. Michael. That will be that will be up to the city council to decide whether or not. So I really plan. want to be get at the December 30th if it's possible, but if it's November 30th, whatever is going to work, I'm going to try to force it the to make it happen because I don't want demo the building, and I know same thing. You guys don't want me to demo it, and just for nothing, it's not going to benefit nobody. The the, the I already have spent a lot of money. Are you done? Yep. Sorry. The dilemma that the city finds itself in is the same one it found itself in nine months ago. And that is you have a special use that was approved by the city council, but it is not your typical special use. Your typical special use is in this district, we're now going to allow a bar. That's just a special use in most districts. And if they don't comply or they don't get done, time is simply take away the special use and they can't put the bar in there. This was a special use in the form of what's called a planned unit development. And part of that plan unit development, essentially variances are granted, even though you don't call them a variance, that allows the construction of a building that does not otherwise comply with the zoning code. The shell of that building is done. It invades setbacks where they're not supposed to be. It does a whole bunch of things that would not meet base code. Correct. So the problem that you run into is if you say, nope, no extension, he's now in violation of the zoning code because he has all kinds of non-conformities with setbacks, I assume site area, Gina, or lot area coverage, um, and some other things. Well, that means either A, we have to go to court and try and get a court to demolish the building, or authorize us to demolish the building, or require him to demolish the building, which a court might be unlikely to do since that's already there. And we previously approved it, even though that application, that approval, has lapsed. That can be a difficult sell. Um, possible, yes. The other problem is the property is already zoned for the use he wants to do. He can have, I believe, a gas station at that location. He can have, or not the gas station, no, but the, uh, the convenience store, yes. Correct. Retail sales office, professional services is permitted. Gas station is a special use, which was part of the plan development. 
So he, he doesn't necessarily, the only loose he uses is, loses his, his, his gas use, no big deal to him at that point, because we make him demolish the building. What we might be able to do, however, is start assessing fines for nonconforming with our zoning code. Again, because we previously approved it, it'd require following a lawsuit, probably a few months of litigation, maybe up to a year of litigation, um, but you're talking about potentially $100 per day of violations, which could add up real fast Correct. for Mr. Chaudhry. Um, if the council were to approve it, moving forward either for the November 30th deadline or the December 30th deadline, whichever one, I'd probably try before next council meeting to sit down with uh, the applicant and work out essentially, even though you cannot contract zone in the state of Illinois, some kind of a prearranged fine structure so that if he's not done, the fines start accruing retroactively to September 30th, the date which this <coughs> current special use would expire, um, and try to work that out with him. Uh, I personally have, in over 20 years of legal experience, never had to deal with an applicant that came back this many times to ask for extensions. Certainly, I've seen delays before, but not where there's so little movement on a project that I've seen on this one. Council? Alderman Snow. And I guess I'd have to echo the, the mayor's uh, comments in regards to, I, I hear it quite often, you know, at least once a month from somebody at work and on the street about, you know, what's going on with the gas station. It's, it's, a, it's a big issue, um, makes everybody look bad. Um, on the other hand, I realize um, things happen and it's not to uh, his advantage to drag it on any further because the longer he's not open, less revenue he's not generating so you know it's to his advantage to be open my big concern at this point though would be the fact that with uh, all the concrete work that's going to need to be done or whatever um, hard services need to be put in um, you're going to be pushing um, weather issues and that's a concern but again what do we have now versus what what we could wind up with I, I'm not sure. So. Alderman Snow raises an interesting question. And, and Jamal, in our meeting, you told us that the biggest issue was the canopy and getting that installed. Correct. That you could have the pumps and the pavement installed by uh, when? I'm sorry. The big issue is the uh, piping and the island. The canopy can be installed. Uh, the day I have the footing for the canopy, mm -hmm. I can start putting the concrete. Well, when the, can you get your flat work done? Uh, I have a, uh, the construction guy, he has applied for the permit for the fire marshal. That could be done this week or next week. The day he got a done, get a permit from the fire marshal EPA, then uh, uh, we're going to start doing the footing. Have you applied for that permit? Yeah, he did. When do you expect to hear from the fire marshal? Uh, we expect that this week. So you could have the, you could have the flat work done by when? Uh, uh, fire work. Uh, the fire the marshal, uh, the con if I had, uh, if we got the permit this week or somehow next week. Let's say you get next Friday. When can you okay. have it done? Uh, it's coming Friday. Before, uh, before, before Friday. Uh, pr probably the two weeks after I got the permit. That would take you to, let's say, October 5th. So after that's done, all that's left is the then minor stucco work. Yeah, uh, so stucco work can be done camp. within this month. It'll be done soon because it, uh, the guy is going to be starting probably tomorrow or next day, whenever he comes. Otherwise, a Sunday or Saturday he comes for sure. So you're saying you can have everything done except for the canopy by October 5? Except for the canopy. If I got the permit like next Friday, within a two weeks, I have almost whatever is left, 90% of that. Except the what if you don't? Uh, that's why I'm here to get a what little if extension. Don't have it done? If I don't, if, you, if we have the extension and you don't have it done, uh, if we have a night like a December 31st extension, if I don't have it done, then I'm with you guys. So now we're back to what, do you mean, what days. is what is I'm with you guys mean? No, whatever. If you want me to demo it, then I demo it. I spend a lot of money on that, and I'm not going. I don't want to do it. But 90 days, if I won't be done, 
it's a, I don't have to be back here. Alderman Freeman. Okay, I guess my question is for Attorney Drill. So the options are we give him the extension, and if we don't, then it costs the city money to take him to court, at which time either the city pays to have it demoed or he is instructed to demo it. What can he sell that building to somebody else to use it for something else? Or what happens to the property once either he or the city demos it? Who takes possession of that? How does that work? And and you've raised the conundrum that we find ourselves in stated very succinctly. If the court, which I frankly question whether they would order demolition, they'd probably just assess fines. If the court were to order the demolition, um, if he did it, it'd just be they can price a property, he'd own it, and he could try to sell it. The difficulty he'll have in trying to sell it is he'll have a piece of property with fuel tanks in the ground and no building, Correct. which makes it difficult to sell. If the city were to do the same thing, ultimately we could put a lien up on the property, we could foreclose that lien and end up owning the property, and frankly, I cannot advise that the city obtain title to a piece of property with underground storage tanks in it that we're not going to use for some reason. It's just it's a liability, even though they're not leaking at this time, that you don't need to, to uh, undertake. Um, so nobody really wants to own it with a, va with a no building on it, and no foreseeable use as a gas station, short of building a new building. The other problem you run into is let's say we simply say no we're going to extend it the special use lapses in theory he could reapply for it and go through the whole process again but that just puts you back into square one where you were before and if you don't approve it now he's got a piece of property that's a non-conforming use that he can't use as a gas station he can't sell it so you're stuck there with the structure looks like looking like it is for the foreseeable future and yeah, we can use our property maintenance code to go after them and rack up fines and pave it and things like that, but you still have an unused building on the property. Um, so that's what I mean by the conundrum. I mean, yeah, we can go forward. I think, frankly, um, it's, it's a, you're in a position where if you deny this request for an extension, we simply start taking to court and seeking fines, but that means you just have to go back to the beginning and go through the whole process again um, it may be better off, I, I have a hard time suggesting a lengthy extension because he's shown absolutely no due diligence in moving this project forward in the past. Um, but assessing fines as, as we go along, I was kind of thinking if he's promising that if he can get everything done by the canopy by a date earlier, perhaps we have a two-stage approval. If you've got this work done and your, and your permits issued by the uh, by the all permits with the exception of the canopy issued by the building department by a certain date, then you'll have an extension a little bit longer to get the canopy done. But if you don't, all bets are off. You follow? I mean, you're saying that you can get this everything done with the canopy but earlier. Alderman Crawford's got a question. Yeah, my personal opinion is um, <clears throat> you own that land, right? Correct. Even if the building was um, demoed in that, it'd just be a vacant piece of property, which you probably couldn't sell. Correct. Um, and so I'm in for giving you one more chance. Okay, thank you. And uh, granting that um, extension. Thank you. Alderman Stevens. I like uh, Attorney Drilla's idea of a two-parted, because once you get the permit, you said you can have it the the cement work and everything ready and what I do month, would a month be is it if I got the permit like Mike Trilla said uh, yeah. by next week end of next Friday yeah. so it's like we have seven eight days for business day uh, today I got the permit I will come here show it to the Gina I got the permit and I, I have a start working putting the footing for the can before footing uh, footing then uh, he's gonna start putting the piping from the tank to the ground uh, to the pumps, make island, and then I'm gonna start pouring the concrete. Let me make sure so, I understand what you're saying. You've applied for all the permits that you need? Uh, yes, we did. Okay, and so you are waiting on the granting of the permit yes. by the fire department? Yes, no, sir, no, only there's, a, there's a one marshal. permit from fire marshal is an EPA requirement. 
So okay. we have to get that. State fire okay. marshal? Yes, state fire marshal. We have to get that before we even do anything. Uh, because <laughs> there is a tanks, it's a fiberglass. We don't, we're not changing the tank. Tanks are good. The piping was like a single wall. I don't want to take the chance. That's why I want to put the lining from the tanks. Everything but the tank is brand new. So that's why we have to, if when you start doing the lining, you have to go to the fire marshal, apply for the permit. They take seven to 14 days to get it. Sometimes they give you five days. Sometimes they take nine days. It depends, but 14 days will be done. And we have applied that this week. 14 days, when you get your answer by? Uh, no. I'm hoping to get it because we apply last uh, Thursday, I think. And then uh, uh, today's already been a week. So I'm hoping we might get it by Friday. If not, it's going to be early next week. So you'll have your answer by the 21st? And then, uh, we, yeah, I will have answer by 21st. And from there, you need two weeks to get everything done? From there, I need two weeks to get a, put a piping and a put the footing. You will, you, you will, everybody will see the project what's moving. So that would take you to October 5th? Correct. Are you telling me by October 12th, you can pretty much guarantee without putting you in too bad of a position that everything but the canopy will be done? Uh, Mike, I will guarantee October, October what, 17, you say? 12th. 12th. October 12th. I pretty much guarantee a building probably be complete, except uh, uh, if I got the permit next week by fire marshal, I will have a proof, I will show you, I have a footing there, I have the island there, I have a, some concrete work there. Jamal, I don't think you understand where I'm going with this. What I'm suggesting to the council is to set a drop dead date on October 12th to have everything but the canopy complete and installed. And if you don't meet that date, then your extension will terminate that day and we will then begin assessing fines for you retroactively to September 30th at least $100 per day. Correct. That's why I'm asking, can you, if we set that October 12th deadline for everything but the canopy, is that going to work? Alderman Freeman? I have to. So Mr. Chandri, the yes. last time you were up here and you got your nine month extension, I personally asked you, you had contractor issues at that time in financing and I personally asked you, if you had your contractor stuff taken care of and your financing in place to have this done within nine months and you said you did. So why would I believe now? Why did you wait so long to get permits and what was the big holdup? You had nine months all summer and why would I believe that you're going to be able to do this in the next you're gonna see six is, to eight you, weeks. You're going to think it's funny because when I got the permits, I remember I have a nine day, a nine months. When I got the permit, a permit say expire years, one years from the outside. Well, then I discussed my cousins and I, I told myself I, my permit is still good to January next year. But that's just a part of a building because it wasn't special use. Special use was only nine months. And then I work little big, not little big, I work pretty much drywalls. I work at the countertops. I work the bathroom. I work the ba uh, uh, plumbing. We have finished the coolers. We have uh, finished a lot of work with that. So your Three permit months. was good until January, but you knew that your extension was up in September. That, that's what I, I that's why I say you're gonna see it. it's funny. I, I'm not making up, but I thought my special use also when I got the permit, and I remember when everybody talked here, it was nine months. When I got the permit, it say expire a year later, and that's what confused. I still think I have four months. And that's why a project was when uh, slowly. Well, you took it slow because you thought you had a year to get it done in? No. The, uh, then when the canopy times come, Michael, oh, when I uh, uh, have a get, come to get the permit for canopy, what, Gina, four weeks ago, four, three, four weeks ago, right? There was a submittal for the canopy. It was denied for lack of information. And then it was about a week and a half, two weeks before the resubmittal. And then with a week after that is when we all met to avoid another denial, we all discussed, came up with the compromise. 
So but I it think was probably yeah, it was probably about a month ago from the first yeah, submittal. Two, five, four or five weeks ago. Or, or, or then I know, oh, we can't do that pump like that. We cannot do stuff like that. And then we discussed. That's what, if everything went through, we might not be here to pro extension. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we, we've just gone around and around and around. I'm sorry. Um, let me propose a thought, and then you guys all weigh in on it. If we give him until tomorrow to come in to see the attorney, or maybe he needs a full day, to phase over the next... 30 days, what he's gonna have completed each week for the next four weeks. Because he's saying in 30 days he's gonna have everything done but the canopy. Right? I don't think that's necessary. If he's saying that everything's gonna be done by October 12th, except for the canopy, I'll just do two-phase resolution. I'll do this as a resolution. Last one's a simple motion with a vote. See, I'm gonna right. have him take home a piece of paper, write a resolution that says, thou shalt complete this by this date, the rest of it by whatever the council decides to give him, and if you don't, you know, crew fines pursuant to code. Okay. I want something for him to show his attorney. Okay. <laughs> kind of slap upside the head. If but he, if he did it week by week and he was in violation any week, couldn't we start fining him for that violation? And then if he doesn't get the next week, you fine him for another violation? I, I, I no, no. No. It, it'd be too hard to predict on a week to week basis what's going to be done exactly when. So, what do you think about the two tier thing? I like the idea. I would definitely like to have him come and see Attorney Drella within, you know, by the end of this week. Okay. So that, you know, because our fire department can help with the whole um, tank with the fire marshal office because they have just a little more pull if they call down and say something. And then if he can prove that the canopy's on order and all of this. You know, like you said, a two-tier. Um, I, I, I really, I'm drawn on this because I also have gotten lots of complaints, but I don't want to see him fail. Thank so you. So the the two-tiered, giving him to have you know, ready for the canopy at the absolute latest, the you know, the end of October. Have you ordered your pumps already? A pumps I already have is in that uh, warehouse. Are they new pumps. You're, you're putting the same old pumps you had? Nope. I'm putting uh, Encore 300, the best pumper on. I don't so want to just ask you, did you get all new pumps? No. You said it, no. They are from my other location. They're not all new, but they're not old either. So they're so same what like what I have here. They're new to this location. That they're new to this location, but you they're not. What are you going to use out there? No, no. I got a six pump extra. I buy when I find somewhere okay. cheaper. So uh, that, that I understand. So, so you've had them all along? Yeah. I buy it. I got like it. I got. So why did you tell me you ordered them? I buy them like uh, four or five months ago. Put it in the warehouse. Alderman Your warehouse. Porter. Pumps. Your warehouse. Yeah. Alderman Porter. Well, I, <coughs> I agree with uh, Attorney Drell. I like that idea. <coughs> I did want to ask though: Is there any fuel in those tanks right now? No. Are they new tanks or are they old ones? They're old there tanks. For? The reason I ask is because that could turn into a whole another mess, which I'm familiar with. Um, you know, the hazmat, if they do start leaking at some point, and then you have to get into a big deal with all the dirt and everything. They were the inspected by the fire marshal's they office. They're not leaking at this point. Yeah. They will inspect it by the fire marshal and the f whatever the requirement we give it them every time they need. They want us to take their gas out. We did that. So. Okay, do you want to put your uh, resolution into some kind of form that, for the council? That they put you in. Well, the, the council needs to move forward this evening the concept of an extension, um, which I'll put in a resolution form hopefully for next Monday night. Um, do we have, again, Jamal, now I'm putting you on the spot. When are you going to have everything done besides the canopy? Uh, okay, put it uh, December, end of, uh, end of October. Of October for everything but the canopy. But the canopy. And canopy will be done by? Uh, the, as we got it in, if it's an order uh, six to eight weeks, so the, uh, probably in November 15th to November 30th. November 30th. Okay. Fair enough? 
So um, everything's, everything's done by November 30th then. Um, so can you operate without the canopy? I think I can, but I don't want to. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think you want to. Well, but no, but. So you've not ordered the canopy yet? Uh, I have signed the contract with the guy. He didn't, I don't know if he ordered. It's been done yesterday. So I don't know if he ordered or not. But uh, he's going to order because I told him to do it, uh, expedite the canopy. So, so what's he supposed to my, deliver it then? Uh, I, ha I Hopefully have. Hopefully that's the contract. The answer I have is just uh, six to eight week. Can you please bring us uh, evidence of all of these? You can, you can email it to me tomorrow. That's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll see, the guy who's doing everything, he, he told me to take this, and they will see that. So, so nine weeks from today is November 2nd, and he's saying six to eight weeks. So if we give him an extra two weeks on top of that, it would be November 15th, not November 30th. It would be. I have a question. Um, how soon can he open? Um, does he have to have everything inspected before he can open it, like yes. the canopy? Um, so you're not open for business until everything's completed. Correct. And you have to do the final inspection. Well, you're in my ward, and I've had a lot of people talk to me about it. I'm more concerned, like, we need to get it to look nice. It looks horrible. You know, with all the fences up and the garbage and whatever. And I know you did clean up a lot, but um, we just need to get I, on to a better. I even try to cut the, all the trees to make it better. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. I understand what you're saying. And I'm so. thinking, don't go in December. You know, give you some extra time. That's your livelihood. No, no. That's your livelihood. So work with you, but not the whole 90 days. No, no. Um, that's why I'm just putting extra 30 days. But uh, I'm see. I'm the the rest more than anybody. I'm the one spending money. I don't have a coming. It's been two years, and I don't have, you know, if I open tomorrow, I have income coming. I have, um, you know, and plus uh, we're gonna have a uh, next month we're gonna have a two cents in the gas for our county for the city, so it's a benefit to everybody. But not next month. The start of this last Saturday, correct? You? Uh, uh, Becky. Yeah, but a uh, uh, pain. The, hey, yeah. the gas tax went effect this last Saturday? Uh, I have so sent. hasn't done his registration yet? For the other gas station? I have sent it to the counter. No, apparently not. I will, I will call him the, tomorrow morning. He will do it tomorrow because I send him the, I fax him the same day you send me the second time. I send him that. Because see, the, it's gonna be, if it's this month, right? If we have to pay next month, right. correct? Correct. So he, he probably didn't do it because he still thinks it's more time there. No. But I will, I will go on him. I will call him tomorrow morning. Mr. Chowdhury, have you registered your other business with the city, person with the city's business registration yeah. requirement yet? Yeah. <laughs> I registered with the. I have all the business licenses. Okay. <laughs> and I got a same thing gas license in the cow. You register okay. with it. Okay, so the city attorney is going to produce a resolution for a two-stage approval extension that will come to us perhaps next Monday. With a final extension date of November 15th. Uh, the request was November 30th, unless somebody wants the November 15th. I, is November 15th feasible? I want somebody. I want December 31st. I don't care what you want. <laughs> <laughs> What's the council comfortable with? 15th, 30th of November? All right. 30th, just in case. 30th. Okay. 30th of November. So is there a motion for the resolution form to the full city council so an extension to Alderman November 30th? Snow, second by Alderman Crawford. Snow, Snow made Crawford. the motion. Oh, second by Alderman Crawford. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion Please get it done for yourself. And we'll forward to City Council for final approval. I'm trying. I will do it. I will do it. There's nothing in I know. 
<laughs> you just <laughs> I don't know what to say. That's the problem. Because I have a little bit, you know, I get stuck with the project. So I haven't, what can I say? I, all I can just, but uh, that's still going to help. Thank you very much, everybody. I need your proof that you've ordered these things. Email to me tomorrow. That's fine. I'll prepare a resolution. I'll forward it to you so you can review it before Monday night. You need to be here next Monday night as well. That's fine. Next Monday. All right. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Next under B, we have local landmark designation of 527 Pearl Street, the Hotchkiss House. Gina, you want to talk about this a little bit? The Historic Preservation Commission motioned to a recommended approval of the landmark status. The current owner, Kathleen, is here right now. Um, the Hatchex House has quite the history that's outlined in the staff report of owners. Um, the architect and original owner, Mr. Hotchkiss, was very big in the uh, Freemasons and several groups within town. It also had um, Ames, uh, Clannons was the, the last family that lived in there. It has connections to the National Sewing Machine Company. And what I found interesting is that the shared driveway actually went all the way to the Illinois Supreme Court, um, which made me giggle because I hate shared driveways for that exact reason. So it, it shows that even in the 40s, they were a problem. Um, so the condition of the house is, it's still in very good condition. The original woodwork, trim, stained glass windows, um, the Clannons have take, took very good care of the house. So structurally, it's sound. Aesthetically, it's in good condition. Um, just the, the the history of those that have lived in there is quite significant to the city. So staff recommended approval, and so did historic preservation. Questions or comments? Yes. Alderman Freeman? So is this property currently for sale? It is currently for sale, and the realtor is aware of the pending landmark status. I actually was emailing with her today. So the owner's waited until they put it up for sale to ask for it to be a landmark? Well, Kathleen just recently inherited it after her mother's passing. And when, and correct me if I'm wrong, when she decided she was not gonna reside in it and made that hard decision to put it up for sale because it's been in her family for three generations, she wanted to make sure whoever did purchase it treated it with the respect that it deserved. So that's why she is requesting the landmark status and to help her family continue its legacy of being in the house. Alderman Crawford. I just wanted to ask, I, I didn't hear you. Did you say it was um, the Clannon's house? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Alderman Snow. And maybe you answered this, Gina, but so the landmark status just kind of pigeonholes anybody from making significant changes to the structure without getting approvals and conforming to the general style of the house. Correct. Um, and this is what I was discussing with her realtor today because she wants to make sure she tells potential buyers. Um, if they are, if you are repainting the house, you do not need um, permission. If you are doing asphalt shingles, asphalt shingles on a roof, you do not need permission. If you're doing wood windows that are nine by 12, the wood windows that are nine by 12, you do not need permission. If you're going from wood siding to vinyl siding, you need a certificate of appropriateness. If you're adding extra windows, changing the shape of the windows or the style, you need certificate of appropriateness. If you're ripping off the porch and just putting a little three by three landing. So significant changes to the aesthetics. Um, landmark status does not control anything on the inside of the house. So they can do whatever they want on the inside. It's all on the exterior. One of the benefits though of landmark is the Historic Preservation Commission holds fundraisers throughout the year, um, progressive dinner, murder mysteries, stuff like that, and that raises funds. So anybody that is a landmark property or within a landmark district is eligible to apply for um, property maintenance funds 50-50 up to $1,000. So for instance, this year we helped pay to get uh, two chimneys tuck pointed, a porch repainted, windows replaced and a cement porch that was falling apart uh, to get the masonry work done on that. 
So it acts, it, it does actually open it up to you some grant money to help with repairs that could um, be needed in the future. Additional questions or comments? All those in favor? I need a motion. I need a motion. I'll make that motion. Motion by Alderman Crawford, second by Alderman Snow. Hearing no additional questions or comments, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Passed unanimously. Passed on to council for further disposition. Okay, under number three, public works unfinished business, we have none. Under number four, public works new business. Under A, we have the wastewater treatment plant sludge thickening project change order number two. Brent. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, memo in your packet. Um, there was a, in, included with the memo was uh, a copy of the change order number two for our sludge thickening project down at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the change order represents uh, an increase to the contract in the amount of $74,686. The original contract amount for this project was $1,545,000. The budget for this project uh, was $2,100,000. Uh, total cost of the change orders to date is $85,654, which is an increase of the, over the original contract price of 5.5%. Uh, if you look to the attachment, there's three main components. Um, there's several. There's a total of nine different items uh, that were changes. Uh, items number one, uh, number three, and number five uh, were, the, were the largest cost and all had to do with the fact that when the last improvement project was done down there in 1985, for whatever reason, everything in the subgrade, they poured concrete. Why? I'm not, we're not sure. There's nothing shown in the as-built plans uh, for the project for the work done in 85 that would explain that. Our only theory was they ran into some bad subsoils and decided instead of filling the voids with stone and stuff, they just filled everything with, with concrete. So when we had to go in and make um, adjustments to the piping and stuff for the vent system and our drain pipes and stuff, instead of being able to just to dig through the floor, the concrete floor, and then it'd be a stone usually on the subgrade, everything was in concrete so it made it almost impossible to go in and do the adjustments that we needed to do so what this represents is the is everything below grade is basically new now which is not necessarily a bad thing going forward uh, for longevity and stuff uh, everything's going to be <clears throat> new um, so that was the uh, majority of the cost increase um, the work as far as our schedule goes uh, substantial completion is set for October 16th. Our first, uh, the two centrifuges were put up, was put online today for a test. Uh, those tests, preliminary tests, initial tests are all working well. It was doing what it was designed to do, and uh, it was thickening the sludge as it was supposed to do. Um, so that's got to run for a period of seven days, and then they'll flip over and do the second centrifuge, go through that same seven-day process to make sure that works. And then once that, done, once that work is done, then the centrifuges will become the day-to-day -day operation, and then uh, which will allow the contractor to remove this, the second uh, belt press and to complete the project, <clears throat> with project completion being set for December. I would recommend approval of change order number two for the wastewater treatment plant sludge thickening project in the amount of $74,686. This work is being paid for from the sewer depreciation fund. I have a motion out of effect. Alderman Snow, second. Alderman Porter, questions or comments? Alderman Freeman. So Brent, did I hear you correctly? There was over two million in the budget for this. So even at um, 1.6 and a half, we're still under budget on this? Correct. Additional questions or comments pertaining to the motion now on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is approved unanimously and forwarded to council for further disposition. That being the end of the business on the agenda this evening, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. motion Alderman Crawford, second. Anybody else? Alderman Porter, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Ladies and gentlemen, we are now adjourned. Thank you.